Now, if you're going to store things in the context, you need a context key. So in line nine, you see me defining a key. And that key that you use should have a unique type associated with it. Because values in the context are stored by their type value sort of representation. And you want to do that. You don't want to use like a, an integer as your key type. Because if I'm using an int, and let's say Patrick is using an int, and we both decided to use the value int of one, we could be overriding each other's values in the context. So to avoid sort kind of collisions, you want to create your own key type. Now, what you might also notice is I've made the key type and the key unexported. I think it's really important that um, you try to make things unexported, especially in this case. We're going to talk more about package level variables needing to be unexported um, and, uh, and other things as they come up. But it's really important to me that these things are unexported and that I have found over the years, instead of making the key exported and have people use the key directly inside the context API, which is really cumbersome and not friendly to use, make the key type and the key unexported and then build an API around getting and setting the values. Now, if you've ever taken my ultimate Go class, you will hear me say that never, ever, never, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever write getters and setters in Go. Don't do it. Don't write methods whose job it is is just to change state in some field. Don't do that kind of stuff as a general rule. In fact, if I see a function called get or set in the beginning, it usually stops a code review for me. That's how kind of nauseating it is for getters and setters. Now, here's the funny thing. When it comes to context, the context has a value bag. And essentially, what we're doing is getting and setting values. And so here's one of those kinds of exceptions where when it comes to a context sort of API, I'm OK with get and set, because really, that's the behavior that we're implementing. So I want you to design these get and set APIs. And what I also want you to do is design them in a way where if these values don't exist in the context, that there's some sort of default way to handle it so we don't have to panic or things start to kind of shut down because we were expecting it and it wasn't there. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.